welcome, welcome to Colorado Nordic Stories. We're here with Mary Ann, uh, and she's with YMCA of the Rockies Snow Mountain Ranch Nordic Center. She's their programs director. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Cassidy. <laughs> um, so why don't you just tell us a little bit about your operations and what you have going on and, and maybe kind of what people might not know about uh, Snow Mountain Ranch Nordic Center. Sure. So our Nordic Center is a small Nordic Center as far as square footage goes, but I have a lot of trails and that's all that really matters. So we have about a hundred kilometers of groomed trails. I have Nordic trails, I have fat bike trails, I have snowshoe trails. Um, our Nordic shop is a full retail shop. You can buy anything you possibly could want in the Nordic world. We can wax your skis, we can mount your bindings, we can sell you some really sweet gear to make you look good while you do it. So pretty much <laughs> well, anything you need. Right, because you gotta look good while you do yeah. it. And, and it makes you faster when you look like you go faster. So yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we have a full shop and I think sometimes people are surprised when they walked in like, oh, I didn't know all of this was here. Um, and right now, Nordic skiing is the best socially distant activity out there. So we're seeing a lot of new people who have come and experienced it and bought skis for the first time. We're really enjoying just, we love introducing people to the Nordic community and to the Nordic sport. We do a whole lot of lessons, um, especially beginner lessons for people who've never skied before. We probably teach hundreds of people to ski every year. Yeah. Lessons, so. I know there's a lot of folks that since COVID's here and we are looking for that socially distant activity or starting to try this out. <clears throat> uh, and I would say that you guys have kind of a mixed terrain. Do you guys, when someone comes on board, like where does that start? What do you recommend for them? What, how should they get into the sport and what should they try at your facility? Sure. Uh, well, I'll, I'll start by, I grew up in the Midwest. Um, not as a skier of any kind. Um, snow sports were not a part of my background growing up. And I came out and I interviewed for a job at YMCA the Rockies. And part of the, the interview process was a tour on skis. And I had never skied before. And I thought it was the most miserable experience in the entire world. And why would anyone do this for fun? Also, I was in an interview. So I was trying to look good and like not breathe too hard and like make a good impression. But I was like, this is like, this is torture. Why would anyone Nordic ski for fun? Maybe much like your teenage years. Um, and then I got the job and I got hired here. And the first thing I did was take a lesson with some of our Nordic staff. And that was over 15 years ago. And one lesson made a huge difference in my enjoyability of the sport. I found that just a little, a little technique goes a long way with cross country skiing. And, and you can go out and once you have that first lesson in an hour, you can learn enough technique to make it a really pleasant, enjoyable tour to go out and, and see things. And we have a lot of terrain, like you mentioned, yeah. um, and it's all, it's all measured in green, blue, black, just like a downhill resort. So if you look okay. at, at a map, green trails are going to be more level and more easier, um, you know, for those beginners. And we have a lot of green terrain that's closer to the Nordic Center so that you're never too far from quitting or help, whatever okay. you need to do. Uh, and then there's, you know, blue and black terrain that's farther out that has more elevation gain and, and it's just a little more difficult. So we try to have a little something for everybody from the beginner skier all the way up to the elite skier and Olympians and Paralympians who come and train here. So something for everybody. Yeah. Um, so I know at the Colorado Cross Country Ski Association level and talking to a lot of the Nordic Center directors, that's the one thing that they really hit on is that people have a positive first experience. And if they can have that positive first experience, that they really get kind of addicted and connected into the sport. So I think you're reiterating that of trying it without a lesson wasn't so hot. <laughs> trying you know, it, it, a lesson. it was not by choice, uh, but that is how, that's how I was introduced to Nordic skiing. And, yeah. right, I, and I think everybody who tries it realizes, oh, this is something I can do. And, and I see a lot of variety and diversity in the people who come and especially age diversity who come and I watch these like 80 and 90 year olds get out and they're still cross-country skiing and I'm just like man I hope I'm still cross-country skiing when I'm 80 or 90 like they just get out there and go for it and and it's just something it literally is something everyone can do wh whatever wherever they're from whatever background they've got and if they've got no ski background at all it's a really easy sport to pick up and to get outside and enjoy it and breathe the fresh air and have the view of the mountains and have a little zen moment. 
kind of like <laughs> that, that that is what I think is the best part about it. Yeah, well, and, and mentioning the like getting out in nature and the Zen moment, that's one of my um, kind of, I guess, favorite things about your facility is you, you guys have, I know you said one of the smaller resorts from uh, square footage wise, or I don't know how you said that, but really you guys have so much terrain. It's kind of this isolated area. So you have all this wildlife. Um, and I, I've acquired two best moose, best friends, because they're mm. always out there and I get to see them. Um, and I know I've come across fox and then, you know, white snow rabbits and every time does not disappoint. I go out there and, and see something. And I, I think that's um, something unique and special to your guys' location, what you offer. So tell me a little bit about your property and, and why do you guys feel like you attract so much wildlife? Sure. Well, in short, I have 5,000 acres here at Snow Mountain Ranch. And so that's a whole lot of terrain to spread out a whole lot of trails. And so even though we might have, you know, lots of guests staying here on property, it's really easy to just within a few minutes feel like you're by yourself in the middle of nowhere. And there's just so much space to spread out from a social distance standpoint. But also that also means there's a lot of wildlife because, you know, they feel very comfortable being here because there's not people everywhere. And so you do come across moose and fox and rabbits and all kinds of fun things and lots of interesting tracks while you're skiing along to identify. Yeah. So, um, we, the moose are very popular. I have a group of friends who like to ski and our goal is to try to see a moose every time we ski. Um, <laughs> sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but that's always the goal. Uh, but we have a creek that runs through our property. It has a lot of willows and, and the moose love hanging out there. So your chances yeah. of seeing one are pretty good. Yeah. Well, and, and that creek that you guys have going through the property, I think that's not, you know, going back to that kind of mountain serenity, you have such a mix of um, mountain experience. So you, you have that mountain stream with the willows and then you can get up into the aspens and the pine trees and, uh, you know, climb up the mountains or not. You also have areas that you can get up and have 360 degree views from a Vista perspective. Uh, so, you know, definitely something worth experiencing for all of those reasons. Um, so you mentioned that you have 5,000 acre property and that you have guests staying on site. So tell me about that experience. I know people, when they think YMCA, they, they have a certain expectation associated to that. And I think that you guys are outside that box. So what does your experience look like at Snow Mountain Ranch? Yeah, we are very outside the YMCA box, uh, for sure. <laughs> Uh, we are weird in the YMCA world that we are essentially a, a resort that has all types of lodging. So lodging like rooms, like hotel style rooms. And then we also have cabins, two bedrooms all the way to eight bedrooms. So a lot of our lodging is for family reunions and youth groups and individual families. Pretty much there's a type of lodging that fit almost any, any type of group that wants to come or any individual family who wants to come. Um, and some have kitchens and some don't. And there's just a, a wide variety of types and price points, but, but really everything we do is geared around families. The YMCA is all about serving families and bringing family and friends together. That, that is our, our goal. And so everything that we've got kind of serves that. And cross-country skiing is a great family activity. I make my five-year-old and my 11-year-old get out with me and cross-country ski. Um, mostly the, oh, the five-year-old is the making, the 11-year-old likes it now, but the five-year-old is still <laughs> a little hesitant. Uh, but everything that we do is family related. So even though we might come and cross-country ski as a family for an hour, I'm lucky if I get an hour out of the five-year-old, and, and then our attention span is over and it's time to go do something else. And so what I love about our property is that it's not just skiing and lodging, there's all these other activities to do. So and you can go swimming, you can go roller skating, ice skating, tubing, there's a craft shop where you can go make crafts, basketball, games, like everything that we do is really set up to provide really great interactive experiences that bring families together. That's what we love to do. Yeah, and I know. So if you're staying on site, it's it's kind of an inclusive experience from activity and lodging perspective, which you guys also offer food on site as well. Um, and I know that has some restrictions now with COVID, but um, and so that if people don't want to go off site, there's food available to purchase on site. Is that true? That is true. Um, so there are multiple food options on site, or you can go off site, up to you, whatever you want to do. 
um, a cafeteria style, all you can eat. Once again, very conducive to families. Everybody can find something they like. Hopefully, we will disagree about what we're going to have for dinner tonight, which is what usually happens in my house. So the cafeteria is a good, a good option for that. And then there's also a grill that has like pizza and sandwiches and kind of short order things as well. So a couple of different options for lodging and, and meals. You, you can ski in and ski out for most of our lodging as well. So it really tries to be as inclusive as possible and, and just trying to have as many amenities and things that, that suit families in one place. Yeah, and one of my favorite things is you don't necessarily have to have everything to be able to participate in your activities because like you mentioned ice skating and the tubing and so it and it's some of those activities you guys provide the equipment necessary to do the activity as well or the roller skating um, and I do think worth mentioning that the pool's indoors so it's great for winter or summer right <laughs> yes it, it would be an, it would be a second ice skating rink if it was outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and, and all those are accessible to anybody staying on property or if you're a member of the YMC of the Rockies, correct? Correct. Also, if you are staying on property, your trail ticket for the day, your trail pass is included with your stay. So you can oh, wow. stay for free if you stay with us. And in, in some of your lodging options is, I, I believe you told me that you can just ski kind of from your cabin or where you're staying. So it's kind of ski in, ski out in that respect. Yep. Um, a lot of our cabins are right along the trails, which is are just a very short walk to the trails. And then one of our lodges, Indian Peaks Lodge, is ski in, ski out. So every room in there, you can just go right out the back door and put your skis on and hit the, hit the trail. Yeah. And I mean, from when I've looked in at the pricing, I mean, you guys are really affordable. So it is kind of targeted at that at family friendly price point. For folks um, it, you know so uh, do you feel like compared to other lodging options that you guys are more accessible from a price point or what does that look like I think that we are very affordable especially when you take into account all the activities that we talked about if all you want is a room to sleep in I'm sure you can find a cheaper room to sleep in but not with all the activities and amenities that we offer all of those things being included increases that value point tremendously and if you have you know, just need a room or you want a, a cabin to stay for the weekend with your whole family and multiple families come and stay together. We have room for all of those things to happen. So yeah, and all, all very, very affordable. And the other thing that I think is very affordable is if you are in the local area or in the front range and you want to come up and ski often, um, our membership is only $250 for unlimited skiing for the whole family not per person that's 250 for the whole family to come and participate in activities and that's for a whole year year round not just nordic skiing so that's also a great value for people who just want to come for the day that is a great value um so i know we've talked a lot about families uh but i also can see this as a great retreat for friends or just even couples who want to escape and and be more submersed in uh nature mountain experience without the hassle uh so do you guys accommodate those groups or what does that look like absolutely i i think that there's something for everyone and and yes we have a lot of family activities but also it's a great getaway for um, corporate groups for individuals for just a couple who wants to come in with COVID and being socially distanced you could come in and get a cabin and bring your own groceries and not have to talk to anyone or see any other human beings but between when you yeah. get here and when you leave and you can have your own very secluded experience if that's what you're looking for so very different options depending on on what people need yeah um well, is there anything else that you feel like is kind of worth exploring or any advice you have uh, to people that, you know, maybe haven't been to your center or haven't tried Nordic skiing before? Um, I would say in the world of COVID and whatever is going to come next after COVID, we, we have a unique option for really doing a great socially distant activity. You can come, you can be outside, you can be with whoever is in your germ circle whoever that is, uh, you know, we, we have ways to manage how many people are coming in at any given time. We have lots of cleaning procedures in place. I, I think it is a perfectly safe and socially distant activity where you can be outside and take your mask off and, and breathe the fresh air and just feel normal for a little while and get some great exercise and get some sun and, you know, 
look at the mountains and reflect on your life or whatever you need to do. But I, I just think that Nordic skiing is great for that and that we in particular are really well equipped to, to send people out to do that and really enjoy what we have to offer. Yeah, no, and I, I agree. I think the sport in general, right, just lends itself to the ability to get out and, and feel normal again and, and be able to enjoy time with family and friends in a safe way um, and try something different. I did realize I had one more question for you because I you, oh. you talked about you guys have snowshoeing and fat biking um, and those different trails. So uh, can you explain how does that work? Are they multi-use? Do you allow pets? Uh, you know, for people who maybe don't want multi-use, do you have options for them? Uh, and if I do want to try fat biking or snowshoeing, do you guys do rentals uh, with that stuff as well? Yes, I can answer all those questions. So yes, I have rentals for fat bikes. And yes, I have rentals for snowshoes. Um, fat bikes, we can rent by the hour or by a half day or full day. Um, snowshoes, same as a, a ski rental. Or if you try skiing and hate it, we can trade them out for snowshoes. And you know, we just exchange them, no problem. Um, but our trail system is so vast and we have so many different trails that we're actually able to split up most of our use. So we have snowshoes and fat tire bikes that use one set of trails. And then I have our regular ski trails that are separate from our cross country or from our, from our fat tire bikes. So some people are concerned about mixed use and we have some separation of that. Um, we also have dog friendly trails. And so there are some very dog specific trails uh, that are purple on our map. So those are for anybody who wants to go out and try skidoring with their dog or take their dog for a ski. Um, and so we have some of those trails available as well. And we use those dog trails as, as more multi-use trails as well, uh, yeah. just to give a little more additional terrain to, to bikers. Uh, but a lot of the snowshoe trails and the fat bike trails are more like single track in the summer. So they're much narrower and smaller trails that are typical wide open, as wide as a groomer kind of big ski trails. Yeah, so you said ski, ski journeying, which I'm sure some people aren't familiar with. Can you explain what that is? Um, I, yeah, I mean, it's skiing with your dog. And so you have a harness and they have a harness and you're attached to them. And in theory, <laughs> they're supposed to pull you. <laughs> but I, it does not always work that way from what I have observed. So yeah, um, for, not for the faint of heart to try yeah. that for the first time. But in theory, you, you are hooked to your dog and they help pull you along, which sounds great. So yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 don't try and great. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, maybe save that for like the third or fourth time out. <laughs> right. Maybe that's, yeah, definitely not your first time skiing, but when you're feeling pretty confident, maybe then we introduce the dog level. Yeah. Um, well, I really appreciate your time today, Marianne. It sounds like you guys have a great facility with, a kind of a lot to do for everybody and and I guess my takeaway is it sounds like to take full advantage of what you have to offer staying overnight really would be the ideal situation because you can go ski for as long as you'd like an hour or two I know most of us don't make it near all day <laughs> and then you have a plethora of other activities to enjoy and all while socially distant so um, you know, I, I have to say I, I've enjoyed my experiences there and I, I really encourage people to get out and try your facility. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that nothing sounds better than going for a little ski and then coming back and sitting by the fire and having some hot chocolate and some snacks. Then maybe go out for a little more later. I mean, really, that, that seems like the ideal setup yeah. for me. So I think I your exertion. <laughs> right? I think people enjoy it. it I, I think we have a unique location that, ha that has both lodging and skiing and, and kind of the best of all worlds. Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys have um, any more questions or inquiries on uh, YMCA, the Rocky Snow Mountain Ranch, you can visit www.coloradocrosscountry.com and there's more inf information there or you can uh, go to snowmountainranch.com as well. Um, but I really thank you for joining us today, Marianne, and I hope you have a great day. All right. Um, Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>